All right. So yesterday we talked about simple and compound interest, right? We kind of dabbled across the two. What was the difference between simple and compound? There was a big old difference. Yes. Being simple has like a continuous number and pattern, and compound is not. It's yeah, absolutely. Simple um, had the same, the interest was constant. It did not change. It was always at, we always added the same interest each time. Compound, it depended on what was in the account as we move forward. Okay, so they are different. Today we're going to talk about simple interest. <clears throat> so, fun fact, we're going to go back in time again. Uh, the earliest loans date back to 3000 BC. And interest on those loans may have extended over generations. Do you know what a generation is? Like your grandma, your mom, and you is three generations. Okay? Um, and it extended over generations, not just four or five years, which is usually what it is today. Like a car loan is usually four or five, six years. <clears throat> One of the first written records of an interest rate occurs in the Code of Hammurabi. Hammurabi ruled Babylonian from 1795, that should say to 1850, because that doesn't make sense. There we go. Um, he's known for being the first ruler <clears throat> to write a set of laws that defined people's rights. And in this code, he allowed interest rates to be as high as 33 and a third percent, which is ridiculously high. Okay? That does not happen anymore. Well, it might. You gotta watch out. Remember, we said credit cards, they trick you. Watch out for them. Okay, so to find simple interest, okay, we have a formula. It is I equals PRT. <clears throat> so to calculate the interest that is forming, we do PRT. What do you think the I stands for? Interest. How about the P? There you go, principal. The R? Rate. And T is? Time. Beautiful. And time is usually representing um, how many years? Hmm? Yeah, so typically it would be four to five. Absolutely. We good? All right. All right, in simple interest formula, the T, which is time, is expressed, is expressed in the same period as the rate. So if the rate is given as an annual interest, that's going to be, a, time is going to be measured in years. If the rate is given a monthly interest, then we're going to have to alter our rate to be expressed in months. Interest rates, though, are most commonly expressed as the annual interest rates. So we will always assume that unless we're told otherwise. Okay. No. no? I'm on a 50 year. Okay. Okay. Interest rates are generally given as percents, but we know we have to alter them or convert them into decimals to put them into our formula. There's two ways to convert them into decimals. Which what, what's one of them? Take your percent and do what? Not multiply. We can divide by what? Not by itself. By 100. We can divide by 100 or we can physically move the decimal back two places. Okay? So let's pretend it's like, I don't know, 3.5%. Okay? To convert that to a decimal, I can take this decimal, move it back one, two spots like that to get 0.035. Or you can take 3.5 and divide it by 100, and you'll get the same thing. So two ways to change our percents into decimals. All right. So unless otherwise, we will always assume that it is annual, and we got to make sure we our percents into decimals. Ready to do some? Whoop, whoop. All right. Here we go. K 
Calculate the simple interest earned in one year on a deposit of $1,000 if the interest rate is 5%. Okay, so the formula we just figured out is PRT, right? So I need those three pieces of information. Do I know my principal? What is it? 1,000, there you go. Do we know my rate? What is it? Good, it is 5%, yeah, which we are going to convert into a decimal, so it'll be 0 0.05. And do we know my time? What is it? One year. <clears throat> so we get to multiply all of these together. 0 0.05, and you can put all of this into your calculator at once as long as you use parentheses. Multiply it all together. <clears throat> what do we get when we multiply it all together? Mm, no, nope, try again. What is 1,000 times 0 0.05 times 1? It is just 50. There you go. It didn't ask the total amount. It just wants to know the interest earned. Okay? So the simple interest earned in this example is just $50. Simple interest earned is $50. You're kind of foreshadowing to the last half of our notes today. Then we'll put it all together. These first couple ones, it just wants to know what's the interest earned on the account. <clears throat> All right, so this account has earned $50 in the one year. Questions? Is it simple enough? Ah! Laugh, it was funny. <laughs> okay, next one. This one's a little, a little different. Calculate the simple interest due on a three-month loan of $2,000 if the interest rate is 6.5%. All right, so we need our P, the R, and the T. It's asking again, what's the simple interest earned? So I'm going to use the same equation from last time to find what that interest is. Okay, what is our principal amount? What is it? 2,000. You good. I think you're looking at a different problem. That's where you got that. You good. Um, what is our rate? 6.5%, which changes into 0 0.065. Good. That was our rate. Okay, our time. What's the time? It's three months. Good, which is a quarter of a year. Okay, so we do express it still as like what part of my year. Keep it simple. Three out of the 12 months. I say three month loan. So this is happening three out of my 12 months. Okay, if you want to reduce this, you can. If you want to make it into a decimal, you can. None of that is necessary. If you want to just leave it three out of 12, you can use that. They're all the same number technically, right? So what you plug in any of these, they're going to work. I would always advise to plug in a fraction because sometimes our fractions are never ending, right? The decimals go on forever and ever. So if you keep it a fraction, you don't have any rounding error in your process. Okay? So I will always plug in fractions. All right, let's plug it all in. Interest equals our principal, which is $2,000, times our rate, which is 0 0.065 times our time, which is going to be 3 out of 12. <clears throat> so you can type it all in looking just like this, parentheses and all. All right, so what is the interest earned going to be? Let's see, simple... Interest earned is how much money? 32.5, which is what when it comes to money? $32.50. Good. Very good. 
So in three months, this account has gained $32.50. Questions for me at all about the months or anything? All right, you do the next one. This one's all you. Calculate the simple interest due on a four-month loan of $1,500 <clears throat> if the interest rate is 5.25%. All right, so try this one, and if you, when you get it done, check with your neighbor. All right, so we should have found out that we are earning $26.25 in my four-month loan. Yeah? Beautiful. Tegan, what was your principal amount? Yep. Rod, what was the rate? Good job. Octavius, what was the time? Four over 12. Good. Did you have to change this? Could you if you wanted to, I guess, to one third? You could have. This is an example where the decimal is 0 0.3 repeating, right? So if you just use 0 0.3, your answer is probably different than mine. Okay, because the more you round, the more off you're going to be. So that's why I bless you. It's best to keep a fraction if you can. Yeah? Okay. Um, Riley, how do I set it up? Times 4 over 12. There you go. Beautiful. Put all that in, and we should all get the 26.25. We good? Feel good about it? Okay. Um, bonus question. How much total money is in this account after four months? Good. I'll see. Yes, $1,526.25. Good. That is the total amount in this loan. Um, and it's a loan, so that means you're paying that much more. Okay? So you don't just pay back what you borrow. You pay back what you borrow and then interest. Okay, moving on. So remember the simple interest formula time is measured as the same time period um, as the interest rate, okay? So there are 52 weeks in a year, there's 12 months in a year, right? Quarterly means every four months is what that would be. Semi-annually is what, twice a year? Okay, if they talk about days, days are a little tricky, okay? So there's two ways to think about it. Our exact method, we would divide our loan by 365, okay? That's how many days are in a year, sometimes, right? Every fourth year, you got that extra one hanging out. So we would take our loan or take our time and equal number of days divided by 365. <clears throat> Now, every month has different days, right? Some 30, some 31, and you got February, you may, might have 28, might have 29, right? It's different. <clears throat> so there's another method called the ordinary method where we take more like the average of our days, okay? Ordinary method is based on an average of about 30 days a month multiplied by 12. We would use 360 in our ordinary method, okay? Because we... We're, we won't be told what months we're using, okay? We won't always know the exact number of days that it is being referenced to, okay? So we are going to be using the ordinary method unless told otherwise. Okay, this is the one that we are going to use. So when we talk about daily, we will use 360. This is the method we will use. <clears throat> Any questions on why we're going to use 360 for days? Okay. So let's do some with it. Yes, ma'am. It's more of an average. Yes, because the days of the months change every time, right? Even from year to year or every four years it's different. We're going to do more of an average of our days. All right, so let's do an example when it comes to days. Calculate the simple interest loan on a 45-day loan of $3,500 if the annual interest rate is 8%. So we're going to set it up just like before. We need our P, the R, and the T. What's our principal? 
3,500, beautiful. What is our rate? 8%, and we're gonna convert that to what? 0 0.08, good. And now our time, all right, it's a 45 day loan, so we're gonna do 45 over 360. Do I need to simplify this fraction? No. Do I need to make it a decimal? No. Leave it alone. Make things simple. Okay? Keep it simple. So when we set this up, our interest equals our 3,500 times the rate times our time, which is 45 out of 360 days. Let me know what you get. Remember, parentheses matter. What we get? Thirty, an even thirty-five. Yes, good. So in forty-five days this um, loan is earning an extra $35. That's essentially what they're charging you to borrow their money. Questions for me on this one? Guess what time it is? Time for you to do the next one. Here we go. Our next one, we are going to uh, calculate the simple interest due on a 120-day loan of $7,000 if the annual interest rate is 5.25. Okay? We can't say, oh, well, that's just, what is it, four months because we don't know what these months are. It could be 30 days, 31 days, 28 days. We don't know. Okay? So we're not going to convert things like that. 120 days, keep it the days. <clears throat> So work on this and check with your neighbor after you get your answer. All right, yeah, so we should be getting $120.50. Uh, what did you use for your principal for this one? Seven, oh, goodness, $7,000. What's the rate? 0 0.0525. And the time? 120 out of 360. You could convert it to 12 over 36. You could convert it to one third if you want to, um, but you don't have to. All right, setting it up, we're just going to multiply all these levels together. Two, 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 three, sixty, and we should be getting our 122.5, which is 120 dollars and fifty cents. All right, our next one, we're going to change it up a little bit. The next one, we're using the same formula, but we're actually being asked for something different, okay? We're asking now, we don't know what the rate is. So we have everything else. I know what the interest earned was. I know what my principal amount's going to be. I know how long it took me to get it, but I don't know what the actual rate was, okay? So we're going to use the same formula to find my R. Let's see here, P, R, T, but this time they give me the I. So we don't know this this time. What is the principal? $3,000. What's the time that this happened? Six months. Good. So how are we going to represent that? Good. Six out of 12 months, which you could convert to one half, which is also 0.5 if you want to. Um, and they told me the interest. What was the interest gained? $150. Good. They want to know what was the interest rate for this loan, for that much money to be occurred over time. So, how do I set this up? What's the formula? Let's start there. Good. I equals PRT. Okay, do we know the I? Yeah, we do. What is it? There you go. Do we know the P? What is it? Do we know the R? Nope. Do we know the T? What is it? Six over 12. 
All right, I've set it up. Now what can I do to solve? Combine like terms. Yep. So 3,000 times 6 over 12 is the same thing as 6 times 1 half, which is going to be 1,500. And then, Garrett, you said move something. What am I going to move? Uh huh. Divide by what? Mm -hmm. What's what's attached to the R? Yeah, because we're trying to get the R by itself this time. All right. So what is 150 divided by 1,500? What is it, Eli? One over ten, which as a decimal is going to give me 0.1. Yep. So is my rate 0.1? Yeah, so what is it? 10%. Yeah, there you go. So this time, instead of dividing by 100, we multiply by 100. We're doing the opposite. I'll move our decimal forward two spots. Good. So we can use this formula to find missing principal, missing rate, missing time. As long as I have everything else, we can find other missing pieces. Okay. Bless you. Bonus question, how much money was uh, in this after six months? Three thousand. Three thousand one hundred and fifty. Good. Started off with three thousand. It earned one hundred and fifty. Together, three thousand one hundred and fifty. We're doing a little foreshadowing. Okay. Because what that is called, this is um, your total amount, right? The total amount in the account. So instead of doing one piece, writing the interest, and then adding it to the principal, okay, to find our total amount, which is what I just did, we can actually do it all in one step, okay? This has two different names because it depends on what it's applying to, okay? If we're using it for loans, for like money being borrowed, this is called the maturity value of that loan. If you're using it for an investment where, like, you are earning money, then it's called a future value. So two different names telling you to do the exact same thing. What is the principal and the interest together? So instead of doing it in two different steps, we're going to kind of combine them together and be able to do it all in one, which we kind of dabbled on yesterday. We were trying to find our trend. We touched on it a little bit. Okay. So remember before, we found what we were finding interest by doing P times R times T, right? So to say my final amount is my principal plus my interest, I can say that's also my principal plus that PRT. And then, oh, GCF, we can factor out a P like we did yesterday, and we can simplify this equation to be A equals P times 1 plus RT. So this does all the steps together. So in the process, you will add the interest. And then go get your final amount. Okay, so in our final equation, the A is going to be a future value if it's an investment, or it's going to be called the maturity value if it's a loan. The P is still the principal, R is still the interest rate, and T is still our time period. So we treat all of these like we've been treating them. We're going to do two of these, and then I'll let you work on your assignment. So remember, future value and investment means you are earning money. A loan means you have borrowed money and you're paying them back. All right, ready for our first example? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
here we go. Calculate the maturity value of a simple interest three-month loan of $3,800 if the interest rate is 6%. Okay, so this time we got my P, R, T. That's all we need, yep. Um, what is our principal amount? 3,800, all right, what's the rate? 6%, how do I convert that to a decimal? And that gives you what? 0 0.06, good, and what's our time? Three months, so how do I express three months? Three over 12, beautiful. All right, the formula we're using this time is going to be P times one plus RT. So this is finding the interest and adding it to our principal all together for us. Our principal was the 3,800 times one plus the rate of 0 0.06 times our time of three over 12. Now I show you all these parentheses because if you're typing it into a calculator, you're gonna need all those parentheses. Okay, so that way your calculator does the order of operations in the correct way. So your calculator will do the fraction, then multiply by 0 0.06, then add it to 1, then multiply to 3,800. Okay, so parentheses matter. You could also do it step by step if you want to by hand. All right, 0 0.06 times 3 over 12 is going to be... 0 0.015, add that to 1, and we have 1.015, which gives me a final amount of 38.57. So our maturity value is $3,800.57, hold on. $3,857. There we go. All right. Bonus question. How much interest was earned in that three months? $57. Nice. Another bonus question. Did you borrow money or are you gaining money? If it's a maturity value. We borrowed money. Yep, this is for a loan. So we borrowed 3800 but in three months, I'm going to owe them 3857 All right, you try that last one. Find the future value after one year of $850 in an account, earning 8.2% simple interest. All right, lovelies, check your answer with mine. I got a future value of $919.70. What did I use for my principal amount? $850, good. What did we use for the rate? Did I use 8.2? No, what did we use? 0 0.082, good. And what did we use for our time? One. That was nice. One year. All right. So this is going to give me 850. One plus 0 0.082. Add that to one. So we have 1.082, which simplifies to 919.7. So our future value is $919.70. Bonus question. Are you borrowing money or did you earn money? You earned money. How do you know? It says future value. Beautiful. Bonus question. How much interest did you earn? Beautiful. $69.70. Good. Any questions? All right, sweet. Well, you have your worksheet. There's uh, seven problems. Work on that. If you get it done before we leave today, you'll get a stamp. Uh, we will check our answers tomorrow. 
But as always, you've got to have your work shown for you to get credit. So work on this for the rest of class.